This screencast is based upon Module 4, Lesson 28, where we have you create word problems based upon either expressions or tape diagrams. If you have the expressions, they also want you to make the tape diagrams. I have a, another screencast on this based upon the problem set, but uh, my experience is students have a very hard time with this lesson, so I'm going to give you homework guidance as well, and we'll walk through every one of the problems giving you suggestions to make this easier for you. Okay, the first one is create and solve a division story problem about five meters of rope that is modeled by the tape diagram. Well, first of all, this does not look like the tape diagrams that I've seen in previous lessons, so I'm going to draw it the way at least I do in my class, and I believe maybe the way you see it uh, more commonly is we have our rectangle. We're going to bracket the 5 just like they do. Now we're going to take this and we're going to partition it into 5 equal parts. Alright, and when we work with this we're going to find one fourth of each of these. So we're going to partition each of these into 4 equal parts. This is a uh, the way that I've seen it in my classroom and we see it more commonly throughout the lessons. So I am just going to draw this as a parallel. Now it's good <clears throat> that you learn to be able to interpret both of these tape diagrams. The first one they provide you is a little more extract. But what do we need here? Well we have one-fourths. How many one-fourths in five this diagram is a little clearer. Okay, we have uh, a little clearer indication of how many there are based on this modeling here. But again, you should be able to interpret both correctly. Now, what a lot of my kids have done in my class, uh, erroneously, is they'll ask, uh, well, they'll say something like, uh, I have five meters of rope and I cut it into fourths. Well, that's not going to work, because if I cut it into fourths, uh, we're just going to have something that's represented by this, and that's not the same thing. So we need to differentiate and clearly talk about that. If we talk about five meters of rope, we need to cut it into pieces that are how big? Well, not fourths, but one-fourth of what? Well, one-fourth of our unit of measurement here one-fourth of a meter. Uh, other examples from uh, yesterday's homework, uh, lesson 27, they talked about five different pieces of rope. Five pieces of rope. Or they didn't have five, but they talk about the pieces of rope. And each piece uh, is one meter each. And they talk about each piece being divided into parts. So that's another way that we can do it. But again, we're going to have to start with the 5 meters. And we cannot divide it into quarters. It would look like that. The answer would be how many quarters? Well, there would be 4 quarters. We need something that's going to match this diagram and this diagram right here. I hope that gives you some help. I'm going to refer back to this uh, tape diagram and this problem when we get to uh, the number three A, B, C, and D. Let's look at the next one. Okay, once again this is different from the way it's taught in my classroom standardly. So I'm going to duplicate this tape diagram and I'm going to show the way that I normally do it. I bracket the hole and I put one. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to partition this into four equal parts. And we're now going to, let's take a look, we have uh, each of these one-fourths here is divided into one, two, three, four, five parts. So I'm going to take each of these. And I think this model is a little simpler and a little easier to understand. It's what we do in my class. Now I need to represent this one-fourth, so I need to shade this portion here. And rather than bracket one of these uh, portions within the one-fourth, I'm going to double shade that. 
Okay, and that represents uh, the same thing as the tape diagram above. Again, be prepared to see both and look for the parallels between these. Again, I believe that the second is a little bit more clear. It tells us how many parts there are in all. So we have the quarter pound of almonds, so we have to do that. And when we talk about the quarter pound of almonds, we're going to have to split it into five parts. Some people might uh, put it into five bags or into five bowls or into five trail mixes. But work from there. You're starting from the fourth. The fourth has to be divided into parts. And, of course, we, uh, when we divide a fraction, we divide it by a whole number in, until we go on to uh, further applications. Okay, let's now go on to some of the expressions. All right, it says draw a tape diagram and create a word problem for the following expressions and solve. Well, we should be able to... Uh, uh, drawing of these tape diagrams. Uh, if we go back to earlier lessons, and if you need to refer to them, that's fine. I've got them all recorded here. We have the problem A is we divide a fraction or a whole number by a fraction, and that would be lesson 25. So if you need to refer back to that, look at lesson 25 for the modeling. And the, a part would be would go to lesson 26. Okay, now I'm going to just give you some pointers with this. If we look at the problem, we have 2 divided by 1 third. Well, we have to have something. We have to start with 2 of something. Uh, we could have 2 pizzas. We could have 2 cakes. Uh, food are, are, is commonly used for as examples. We could talk about... Uh, two pieces of rope. We could talk about uh, two pieces of wire, anything like that. Uh, food is really kind of an easy example though, and what do we do? We have to take each one of those and we have to divide each one into three parts. Now remember our answer is going to be a whole number here. So I suggest that when you ask the question, and this is a place where many of my students uh, had a difficulty. After you pose the situation, you need to ask a question. And the question most likely should uh, start with the words, how many? Uh, on to the next one. We're going to talk about a third being divided. And uh, in the previous lesson, lesson 27, they talked about a third a pitcher of water, a third a pitcher of milk could work. Uh, we could talk about a third of a pan of something, a third of a pizza, and we could use leftovers for as an example. And whatever we have here, this third, we're going to have to split it into four equal parts. Now, again, the, a the answer is going to be a fraction. So when we set up the situation, again, we need to uh, use a question. And uh, instead of how many, our answer is going to be a fraction. How much or what fraction of would be great ways to pose the questions. Okay, uh, what fraction of, when we talk about that, what fraction of the original whole cake, uh, what fraction of the original whole pizza, uh, whatever you choose. I'm going to do uh, the last two with you, or we're going to pretty much say the same thing, but I'm going to repeat it. Uh, kids really struggle with this lesson. Uh, it's not that complicated. And keep it simple. Okay, we have one-third. Again, we're going to talk about the phrases. How much? Or what fraction of inner question part? And again, we're going to start with one-third of something. Well, in the last problem, I said we could have a third of a pizza, a third of a cake, a third of a pan of brownies, whatever. And we're going to have to do what? We're going to have to split it five different ways. D, we go back to the holes. And again, we're going to end up with a whole number answer. So how many is a great way to pose your question at the end of the problem. 
And again, we're going to start with three whole things. And we're going to have to split them into tenths. You could have three whole pizzas. You could have uh, <clears throat> three whole cakes. Uh, any number of things. Uh, three whole pieces of wire. Again, but they have to each be split into tenths. And again, if you need help with this, you can refer to, uh, for C, you could refer to the tape diagrams in problem 2. And D, you can refer to the tape diagrams in problem 1 of this same lesson. And again, you can also refer back to lessons 25. And here, lesson 26, for a refresher on how to do the tape diagrams.